All right. Hey, folks. Uh, my name is Sudar Sudhir. I go by Sid. And today I'll be uh, showcasing some of the latest tools we've been building over at 1Password. So by now, I'm guessing or hoping at least a couple of you have heard of 1Password before. So we're traditionally known as the password manager application. Uh, but we've grown a lot in the last few years. And we've expanded from just a basic B2C application to a full-fledged security platform for both businesses and individuals. So what I work on at 1Password is the developer side and the developer story. Uh, as developers, I think a lot of you know that uh, we deal with secrets daily, whether that's API keys, API tokens, hard tokens, or SSH keys. And historically, those have been painful to manage, to say the least. So I want password. Our mission is pretty uh, simple. Uh, make the safe thing the easy thing to do. So, and one password actually already has a lot of great developer tools, like our SSH agent, our SDKs, and our CLI. But today, I want to show you guys something a little newer, and that's 1Password environments. So instead of talking about it, I'll get straight into a demo. So I'll make this. So what I have here is a little hypothetical situation. So hopefully you all will entertain this. But let's imagine a couple of friends and me were talking, and they recently recruited me to work on a Raptors app. We're all big Raptors fans. And the app basically pulls the latest stats from the team, uh, the box scores, and uh, provides an AI summary of what's been going on with the team in the last couple of weeks. And like most apps, this will need a .m file with things like API keys and tokens to access these services. And if you've ever joined a project like this, you know the routine. You clone the repo, you pull it up in an ID, and you see a .n .example file. From there, uh, you go Slack, the most recent person to join this team, and ask them to send over their .n file. From there, uh, you copy and paste and you realize oh, I'm missing a few credentials. You Slack another person, they tell you to go look in Notion, you dig around Notion, and after this whole song and dance, what you end up with at the end is essentially a plain text file with some of the most important credentials and powerful credentials on your computer. So let's simulate me doing that. So I have a... Oops, I got that. So I've... Simulated us doing that. So now we have a .n file with some credentials uh, filled out. And uh, like I said, one, these are just in plain text, so that just sucks. Two, if any of these keys get rotated in the future, I'm out of sync again, and we got to go through this whole song and dance once more. And three is that uh, by default, .n files are just plain text files, so they can get uh, committed up to Git. Uh, of course, you could put them in your Git ignore and ignore them, but if you name them incorrectly or forget to put that in your Git ignore, it's a little too easy to accidentally commit those. Uh, so before I show you how one pastor is now trying to solve this, let me show you. And full transparency, this app doesn't actually do any of the things I said. All it does is just console log the variables it theoretically would have needed uh, for demo purposes, just keeping it simple. So let's switch over to one password. And uh, this is where one password environments come in. So if we right now I'm logged into an account that my team has set up. So if we head over to environments, your environments comes in and basically allows you to define secrets and other environment variables right within one password. So let's go ahead and create a new environment for local development. So I'll call it Raptors app local. And if we head in there, we can go ahead and directly import the .env file that we just created. So let's do that. And now all our environment variables are here. So some of these aren't really like credentials. So I'm just going to mark them as plain text so they're a little easier to read. Like the AI model. Uh, let's do like the port, summary, and log level. And save that. So sweet. Now your credentials are in 1Password. Uh, and if you've used 1Password before vaults, you know another cool thing about 1Password is its shareability. So we can go ahead and manage access. And I can go ahead and add my whole team to this uh, environment. So we'll go ahead and do that. And Steve is our CEO, quote unquote. So I'm going to give him managing access. And Emily's the intern. And it's not that I don't trust interns, but I'm just going to remove her editing access so she doesn't mess with it. We can go ahead and do that. And now when my teammates log into 1Password, the environment will be there. And any updates they make, if they have edit permission, will show up live for, to all of our devices. So this is cool, but it brings the question like, they're stored in 1Password, they're fully encrypted, but how do you actually use them in your application now? So that's where the new destination uh, tag comes into play. These, the destinations tab is how you're going to get your secrets into the various places you need. So because this is local development, I'm going to use the new local end file destination. And what this destination does is essentially mount an in-memory.env file in your project that my app can just read like any other normal.env file. So no need to change your application code. So let's go ahead and do that. 
So I'm going to choose dot env uh, in that repo. Let me make sure, yeah. Dot env. And it's asking me, do I want to replace the existing one? So I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to mount it. So now I'm going to come back to my app and everything looks more or less the same. But you'll notice if I run the application now, we get an opt prompt. And it's basically asking that one password's access has been requested. Would you like to populate this .env with the environment? And only if I give my fingerprint approval do the environment variables actually get streamed into the file. And this means your environment variables are no longer sitting on this. And if I run the command again, you can see because I already proved it once within the session, one password access is not uh, requested. So if I lock it and run it, then of course we'll get the opt prompt. And this time, let's just deny it. And you can see no secrets uh, were passed in. And that works even if I try to open the file to Zuki in VS Code, get the off prompt. It's only if I prove it that the file actually uh, gets the contents. And you'll notice that before we had that one get uh, .env file staged, but because this is not a normal plain text file, it's a FIFO file, the git doesn't track these files. So you can't accidentally commit this up to git, no matter what you name it. Like it doesn't have to be in your git ignore anymore. Uh, and just to prove that this is live updating, let's, let's, for example, change the debug level to warn or whatever. And now if I run this command again, they'll see that before it was debug and now it's become a warn level. So it's constantly live fetching from one password. And the environment gives you a bunch of other uh, advantages too. One of these is versioning. So you can imagine if, for example, me or our teammate just comes in here and decides to keep working with down decides to delete everything, uh, one crossword actually has a uh, uh, versioning of your environment. So you can go ahead and see at 637, this was the state of the environment. At 640, this was the state of the environment where I changed it to warn. So I'm going to restore it back to its original. And we go back to that state. And this works if other teammates make changes too. If they make changes, it'll show up as X teammate made this change at this time. So this is all pretty powerful, but one password environments don't just stop there. In real teams, you're not just dealing with local development. Uh, you've got staging, you've got production, and uh, you need different credentials for each of those. So for our example, uh, if I head back here, you can imagine we have Ro Raptors app local. You would probably want something like a production environment uh, where I'd only invite a few select people because obviously I don't want everyone to have access to production. And within this environment, you can actually select one of our uh, currently supported destinations, which is AWS Secret Sync. And what this will do is create a one-way secure sync between 1Password and AWS. Uh, so then when a secret is updated in 1Password, production gets it instantly. So in this hypothetical, uh, I'm on the, now the 1Password web app. And you can see up here, I'm logged in as Steve, who I said was the core on CEO. So Steve can come in here and, for example, just share this production environment with me. And I'm going to give it managing. I'm Siddharth, by the way. So I'm like sharing it with myself, if that makes sense, as Steve. So if I come back here, you can see immediately the production environment shows up. And I can see all the production environment variables. I can edit them if I need. And I can go ahead and configure an AWS uh, secret sync destination. Uh, so, uh, and once you configure this once, no other teammate has to configure it. It's a one-time thing. So now if I share with other teammates, you'll be able to edit right within one password without having to deal with all the IAM and AWS rules. So no more secret scroll. No more confusion over who has access to what, and no need to touch IAM or redeploy anything. Everything just stays up to date with one password. And uh, to show that, like for time's sake, I'm not going to set up the AWS integration, but in another account, if I go to the environment, I have an environment here that I was shared with my teammate. And you can see here, this environment is currently syncing with AWS. So any changes made to this environment will uh, get reflected in prod right away. So to recap, uh, we went from plain text.emd files and Slack DMs to a world where secrets never have to touch disk, access is fully auditable, uh, versioned, and shareable, and onboarding a teammate is as simple as just adding them to the environment, and then they can go and mount it uh, in their project and just get up and running. And uh, keeping production credentials uh, updated, it just takes a few clicks. So yeah, that's one password environments, uh, making the safe thing the easier thing to do. Thank you. Yeah, if uh, anyone has questions. Yeah. So, this is pretty amazing.
uh, hi, this looks pretty amazing. I'm pretty sure I'm going to implement this tomorrow in my team. Whether the, I mean, they're going to want it. Um, my question is, is there a concept of kind of like a, I don't really know what to call it, but like as an overlay, like let's say I have a different database configured for my development, yep. but we need all the same, you know, dev, uh, all uh, provider keys or whatever, but we need to override certain things locally. Um, is there a provision for doing this within, or is do I have to use like a, you know, dot dev dot local or something? Yeah, so at the moment, one password, we don't support like a uh, overlay, but that's definitely in our uh, beta launch. Like right now, environments is in uh, beta, but that is definitely a lot of feedback we received. Uh, at the moment, like I think we have a sponsor uh, a demo from like Goalock and like tools like that. You'll actually be able to, like you said, have kind of like a local down info where you overlay some of the credentials. But yeah, at the moment, it's kind of just the one thing, but that's definitely feedback we've gone and uh, planning on into that tent.